Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. UMath again. In this video, this is a more applied video, I want to go ahead and show you how to really uh, calculate the radius of convergence using the ratio test or ratio criterion or how you call it. Okay, I've written down three Taylor series or power sums or how you want to call them, never mind. So actually now you only see two of them and we will start off uh, very very slowly and trying to find out the radius of convergence okay for this kind of series I hope you can see which series that is this is the uh, Taylor series of the exponential function so maybe I write it down I write it down like this x of x some, so I hope you know this kind of writing. Sometimes people also write uh, just e to the x, but x x is uh, almost always used in computer programs and so forth. So I'll stick to that and uh, erase that away. We don't need that. It's not important. So let's try to figure out what the radius of convergence is using the ratio test. Actually, how does the ratio test work? We have a ratio and we call this just Q. Okay, and this Q can be calculated as the limit for n to infinity. This is always important. And then you take the absolute value of a fraction, and the fraction is defined as a n plus 1 over a n. Okay, so actually, these guys are are our ans and now we need to plug them in and just take the absolute value uh, just to make our lives easier okay so let's just plug it in and working with Taylor series it's sometimes better to not use the normal fraction sign than uh, it it's sometimes better to use this sign and I will actually use this because now we are using a n but we have to use a n plus 1 so everywhere where you have n replace that with n plus 1 so we have x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial okay now here I take this uh, line here and now below we have a n again but now really a n so just simply copy that this is the easy part okay now we did that fine now let's have a look what will happen with these guys how can we simplify these first of all you see that there we have x to the n and here we have x to the n plus one so what will happen is actually we will be left with only x so let's write that down the limit n to infinity okay now uh, what we are left is here we have a x and now I rewrite these guys and if you see this is in the nom nominator and this is in the denominator also in the nominator but it will because it's the inverse it will come up so I hope uh, you understood what I said mm. Sorry, this is not M, should be N plus 1. So let's choose the right one, plus 1 factorial. Now this factorial sign is only there to confuse you a little bit, but actually is a very, very neat thing to work with. Um, what is factorial? It means multiply, for example, N factorial means 1 multiplied with 2 and so forth until N. So you are taking a product from 1 to N. This guy is taking a product from 1 to N and even further to N plus 1. So actually the guy below is nothing else than N factorial N plus 1. Okay, I like to, to break it up like this because why is that so because that is equal to 1 multiplied with 2 multiplied with n multiplied with n plus 1 and this guy as you can see is obviously n factorial now what we can see is that this guy will be cancelled out and we are left with the limit for n to infinity of the magnitude of x over n plus 1 
Now what will happen is we are taking the limit for n to infinity. Very important is that this x guy here is fixed. So uh, imagine, you can imagine arbitrarily high numbers, but what is important about them, they are fixed, okay? So if you have any fixed number and you divide it by n plus 1, which is going for n to infinity, what you will actually have as a limit, because this guy is going to 0, so our limit is 0. What did we get? We got a Q value that is not dependent on X, so it doesn't matter which X you choose, you are always having the value of X, okay? So in order for the ratio test to be convergent, so our series is convergent, this guy has to be smaller than 1. But what you see is this is always given. Okay, it doesn't matter what which x you choose. You can choose pi to the 1000 or something like this. As long as this n goes to infinity, this guy will be zero and you will have a convergence series. So what you get from this is the radius of convergence is equal to infinity. Okay, it doesn't mean you can plug in infinitely large values for that. It just means you can plug an arbitrarily, arbitrarily high or large values into there. Okay, now that's actually it, so this was our first result. Now very important, whenever you get something not depending on x being smaller than this one, then you have an infinite radius of convergence. If you have something that is always larger than one not depending on x then uh, your radius of convergence is actually zero okay because then you will only have for zero convergence now let's have a look at the second uh, sum here um, what is this just uh, for a feeling of us this is uh, minus the logarithm of one minus x Okay, now let's do the same test, use the uh, ratio rule, we said that the ratio rule is just taking Q as uh, the limit for n to infinity and then we have a n plus 1 over a n, just plug everything in there and see what happens, so we get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, so you see I'm using this kind of uh, writing down for the fraction, here we get x to the n and x, okay, so this is this guy here and this is this guy here, the wall part here. Now what will happen here in front is we get limit for n to infinity, we get the limit of this guy, but we don't care, first of all. We have to take uh, this guy here, and you see x to the n, x to the n plus 1. So we are left with x here above. And again, this is a... in. So you have an inverse uh, number in the uh, denominator. So what you can actually do is you can bring it up, and this guy will stay here below. Okay, now I will rewrite this guy a little bit because you see this um, x here doesn't depend on n. So actually it's again fixed value and uh, because it's an absolute value we can take this out as an absolute value. It's important to take it always out and as an absolute uh, value. Actually I could leave away these absolute values because we have positive uh, values anyway. But what will hap happen to this guy? Actually, it's pretty easy to see, but let's uh, make it more r rigorous so that your teacher will be happy about your stuff. So I I'll just leave away these absolute signs and we will here above I will multiply with 1 by n and here below I will also multiply with 1 by n. So what will happen is we here above we get n over n which is just simply 1, and here below we get, if we multiply this in, we get n over n, so plus, and 1 multiplied with 1 over n just gives you 1 over n. Okay, I'll make some curly braces here around. So what we get is x, and this guy here is pretty easy to see that this is going to 0. Okay, something we must assume. Actually, this is not an assumption. You can really try to prove this, but it's it's a very, very fuzzy theorem that this is going to zero. Mm. Now, actually, but it's 
pretty simple to see that this is true. So what will happen with this this wall guy is this will go to 1 over 1 plus 0 and what is 1 over 1 plus 0? It's just 1 over 1 or just simply 1. Okay, so now this is just nothing else than the magnitude of x and this guy has to be smaller than 1. Now remember in the previous case we had a boundary that was not dependent on x and now we have something that is dependent on x. And what you see is that x has to be smaller than 1. That means you only get convergence if you're actually this is the radius of convergence it's just 1. Okay and it's importantly to know that your x values should be smaller than this boundary. Okay so this is our radius of convergence it's just 1. Now um, I will have a look at another equation here this guy and let's see what happens in here okay what boundary do we get and so forth so uh, let's have a look at this and yes I told you a very interesting thing to note here is that you have a pole at x equals um, 1 okay and in complex analysis you can show that these poles are somehow uh, constraining your radius of convergence. This is a very uh, interesting node to say. So we have a here and uh, if you imagine a circle around this in the complex plane actually then your radius of convergence is always uh, as large as the nearest singularity or pole or n never, ma never mind so just a short thing it's very quick to see where functions have their sim, uh, singularities if you know that this Taylor series is equal to the function itself. Now let's have a look at this guy. Actually what is this? This is nothing else. I will just rewrite it so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, it's 2x over 3 to the n uh, and factorial and actually if you look at the just the pure structure of that this is nothing else than the exponential of two thirds x. Okay sorry for this ugly three in here. Just take this as three. Okay. Okay this is nothing else than the tail series and actually we would uh, we would so to say um, be aware that the radius of convergence is uh, infinitely large because it's again the exponential and it doesn't matter if you plug in two-third of x or something like this it doesn't matter but now, now let's just um, I think I, I won't go through this example because it will be the same as above we will as uh, the same as here uh, so we won't get any more insight so let's get down to here and I'll give you a new example which is maybe more interesting because you get something very interesting out of it for example this guy here x over 2 n n equals 0 to infinity and if you have a look at this guy um, think of this as a uh, uh, no, no, not not <laughs> not Q because that would uh, confuse us with uh, the ratio test. Just let it be A. So what it actually is, it's one plus A plus A squared plus and so forth, mm, A n and so forth to infinity. Mm, uh, let's move that away. This plus doesn't need that. Mm, and actually, if you remember what this is, this is nothing else than the geometric sum. but the infinite. Okay, and what this is equal to is 1 over 1 minus a, very importantly for a being smaller than 1. Okay, this is just a geometric series and um, very importantly from the magnitude a has to be actually if we plug in back what our a was it would be x halves. Okay, and uh, by that we would get x uh, 2 over 1. So if we multiply 
so actually now you see what is your um, radius of convergence it's actually nothing else than 2 okay or except the radius of convergence is 2 now let's check it with the uh, ratio rule pretty pretty fast so we have to take the limit of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n and when, what we have to do is we just have to plug in these values so we have here above we have x over 2 n plus 1 over x to n so this is a pretty simple example so limit n to infinity and now you see something these are actually same terms so we are only left with x over 2 because we have here x uh, over 2 to the nth power and here n plus 1 power so we are only left with this guy and now what I told you was that this guy this limit q maybe let's write down what is actually Q uh, if you have a look at this guy what will happen is it will not depend on your n so what will happen is this guy is just purely itself x over 2 and what we said is for our convergence to happen this Q guy or better now we showed that this is equal to the magnitude of x halves has to be smaller than 1 and you actually see the above uh, property appearing so what we get is if we multiply by 2 here we get it has to be smaller than 1 and by that the radius is equal to 2 okay and that's actually it I showed you for three very very simple kind of uh, equations how to find uh, their uh, how to find their um, radius of convergence and again a little uh, remark on this imagine in the complex plane if you have already heard about complex numbers um, uh, actually here for 2 we have a singularity and actually you can use this for real numbers actually so we have for 2 a singularity if you plug that in singularity uh, is almost the same as a pole if you plug that in then you have this value and um, from uh, the origin this really is just a circle with two so your function converges everywhere in here until it gets to the singularity and you can ask yourself why does this happen okay why does this happen this at a singularity or a pole our Taylor series doesn't not appear to be able to uh, calculate our function or to represent our function but this is pretty simple because if you have a look at the Taylor series it actually is a very easy constructed polynomial and polynomials ha don't have uh, poles or something like this so actually you cannot represent a function with a pole using um, Taylor polynomials um, instead of that you could use Laurent series or um, even more uh, complicated kind of series but uh, the Laurent series is maybe the one uh, to go okay that's actually it and um, I will do even more videos on that stuff uh, for you to get a little bit of uh, insight into these guys kind of things okay that's actually it if you like my videos please give thumbs up and um, stay tuned for new upcoming videos see you guys